for so many years, I had a hard time understanding this moodiness. I felt an incredible amount of guilt over being so moody. I thought it was a defect. I thought this hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Shantia here. So if you guys are new to my channel, this channel is dedicated to helping women live in a way that feels the most natural to them. Okay, so in today's video, we have a new theme. This is, this is different from my Married at First Sight reviews. The theme of this video today is Moody Creative. This is something that has taken me the longest time to kind of understand. My story is that I've always been deemed the artist, the creative one in the family, which is an honor, thank you. But you know, of course, everyone has their own bit of creativity. Creativity is energy, it's channeling. A lot of artists talk about it that way. I couldn't agree more. That is what it is. But my parents always called me the artist. They knew that I was a, I was a little bit different. And the way that, the best way for me to describe this is to paint the picture. Both of my parents work for the military and the government. My brother and sister both work for the military and the government. That was the roadmap that they knew. And that was the roadmap that they wanted for me. But I was just like, no. <laughs> I don't know how this is going to work. I'm not meant for that, either that path or that path. I always felt so strongly drawn to my own creative impulses of doing and creating whatever it is I wanted to create. So moody creative, what do I mean by this term moody creative? I want this video to be about celebrating those moods, celebrating those fluctuations, understanding that creativity isn't structured. It's not systematic. You can't just bust it out like a factory machine. It's about seasons and cycles. It's about tapping to your innermost authentic part of yourself and just letting it flow. This is something that I've had to come to terms with because for the longest time, I, there were times where I almost gave into both of those, those roadmaps that my parents offered me. It's like, oh, am I gonna do, join the government? Am I gonna join the military? But somehow God had other plans and he kept saying no, like very vehemently, no. I didn't understand why those pathways didn't work for me. I was smart, I was academic, I a school, I was passionate. Why couldn't these pathways just be so easy for me to access? And that's because there are other things that were so much more accessible for me than those pathways. When it came to art, when it came to creativity, super accessible. I pursued a art degree. So I, I have a BFA, Bachelor's of Fine Art. Originally, I had a graphic design degree. I switched it during my junior year and managed to graduate on time. And I kind of want to get into my my college years because when I think about what I went through when it came to college, I followed strong impulses. Because of following those strong impulses, I didn't end up with that, as much debt or confusion as some people do, I think, when they're pursuing their degrees. I made a choice when I was in my junior year of college. I saw the juniors for the studio art majors presenting their work. I remember looking at their work and thinking, that's what I want to do. I want to be presenting these enormously huge canvases of art, of work to people. This is what I'm meant for. And I went up to my teacher, who was my graphic design professor, as well as my advisor. And I talked to him and he was like, okay, I think that's a good idea. So I switched it and lo behold, everyone was shocked at how good I was. Art is, it, it is a gift. It is gifted. But the focus and the attention, the practice, the ability to practice and get better at it, that is pure choice. You have to choose to want to work on it, work on your craft, to perfect it, to make it better, to allow it to flow more. It takes practice to do that. So I went to a community college for a couple years. Honestly, I finished in about a year and a half. Um, I took time off and then I got back into college, went to a four-year college for two years and I managed to graduate on time. And when I had transferred my degrees, my credits over, um, it's significantly minimized. I'm talking to my counselor, she's having this conversation with me and she tells me, oh, hey, by the way, you're gonna have to take like four, four more classes to graduate on time. And I'm like, what? No, 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 I didn't put all that money into these courses just for it to not add up. And what did I end up doing? I ended up taking three pet prep tests in my final year of college, um, an online class, and then I think prior to that, I took another online class just so I could graduate on time. And I did with honors. That just goes to show you what happens when you put your mind to, <laughs> to it and you follow that creative impulse. Like I knew I didn't, I had no desire to accumulate more debt. That freaked me out. And so I was gonna figure out how to, to graduate on a budget and I did. <laughs> okay, so it's these impulses. When you have these impulses in life, 
those little bits of inspiration is the divine of the universe whatever you want to call it god talking to you kind of redirecting you telling you where you need to go i've always been the, the black sheep of the family now i love my family we're very close-knit but for many years there was a struggle with me and especially my parents at one point in time my father actually referred to me as the bad apple and I remember just feeling so broken up over that statement. No child wants to be called that. And I always considered myself a pretty good kid, but my parents had certain standards. I was naturally rebellious because I was opinionated, I was an old soul, and I was the creative one. Creative in the sense that I just saw things really differently. I didn't want to do what my parents, what roadmap my parents had desired for me. Therefore, that just made me difficult by default, I guess. Um, but I was, I was rebellious, I was moody. And for so many years, I had a hard time understanding this moodiness. I felt an incredible amount of guilt over being so moody. I thought it was a defect. I thought there was something wrong with me for being so moody. And so for years, you know, I talk about this all the time. About eight years ago, I started my inner work journey. I started working on myself to heal. Cause I'm like, there's something wrong with me. Everyone in my family is okay, but for some reason I'm wrong, so I have to fix myself. I know that's a really sad way to see it, but I'm a Virgo and we're just naturally extremely self-critical. I also have a moon in Sagittarius, which means I'm just super philosophical and I want to know the truth. I want to know the answers of life. And so I went on that journey to explore. I started watching Super So Sunday obsessively because I wanted to understand myself more. I wanted these spiritual leaders and teachers and and authors to show me how to live in a way that felt more easy. I went on that inner work journey and it served me. It served me to understand myself well. I'm very much inspired by and so invested and curious about the human psychology. I always wanna know like what makes us think the way that we think, what makes me think the way that I think. And I always study myself. Studying yourself is the best thing you're ever gonna do in your life because it's gonna teach you so much about desire, drive, passion, fulfillment, depression, grief. It's gonna teach you so much about yourself and about life. There's a whole universe inside of you to study. I went on that journey to study myself, but the thing that I always struggled with after I had graduated college, constant long periods of creative block. I had a hard time creating because I attached at that point, you know, I have to start making money. I have to pay my student loans off. I have to, I need to figure out how to pay my bills and, and make an income. So I, I attached everything I was creating to an outcome. If it wasn't generating some kind of income, usefulness or productivity, I couldn't even create it. And the irony was that I had created things prior to that just for the sake of creating and people were the most responsive to those experiences. There's so much uncertainty attached to a creative career and even entrepreneurship. There's so much uncertainty attached to it. But when I really thought about it, there's uncertainty attached to everything in life. Nothing is guaranteed, not even your 401k, not even your perfect nine to five, not even your, your, your perfect house or whatever, you know, you've established for yourself that structurally gives you a lot of security. Everything is temporary, everything. And it hit me. I'm like, if everything is temporary and everything is uncertain, whether it's creativity, creativity for the sake of creativity or creativity for income, I might as well just create whatever the hell I want, whatever the heck I want. I might as well create whatever I want and have fun with it and enjoy it because nothing in life is guaranteed. One thing that people really need to think about and ask themselves is where in life do they feel uncertain? Whatever the creative block is, it doesn't exist. Everything is uncertain. So I want you to weigh the thing that feels uncertain, what feels uncertain, take one thing that feels uncertain that you really wanna do, take one thing that feels very certain, and I want you to look at those two and give them the same value and weight. It's the same. You can be here tomorrow, you can not be here tomorrow. Nothing is guaranteed in life. Whatever you do now, whatever you decide to do, whatever you give this experience, that's what's certain. So don't be ashamed of this moodiness these fluctuations. It's your inner compass. It's your guidance. It's your guiding light that shows you what you need to move towards or move away from. I remember I was working this job, so I got hired. I was looking for a job out of college and I got hired at two jobs and I was like, oh my God, I, I wasn't expecting to get hired at both of them. And the other one, I decided to just do it on the weekends. And I remember when the manager was there, she was just, she looked so overwhelmed and I was just like, oh no, I feel so bad for her. I wish I could just, you know, be here to help her. But in that environment, as I was standing there, I remember feeling ill and I remember the environment feeling kind of oppressed. Lo and behold, 11 months later, that's exactly how I felt working at that job and I quit. Listen to that instinct and that intuition, that impression of what you get, you sense from people and really tap into that. Now when I 
work for or get hired at a place i really tap into the energy of the the environment the people i've gotten exactly what i felt from the beginning you know whatever tension or peace you sense that is what you are going to experience while you are there so really think about these things um don't be ashamed of your moodiness i think creativity we have to remember is um feminine by nature which means it's cyclical it follows seasons it follows tides and women especially we are very cyclical beings a lot of women who are out there trying to work like men you're not meant to work like men men are meant to work like men but you're a woman okay woman you have your own superpowers and gifts and abilities that you need to tap into. So I joined Toastmasters about a year and a half ago. I knew I had a passion for communication, but I had such intense stage fright. Now, whenever I upload my YouTube videos, I have no, no fear. Sometimes I'm like, you know, I, of course you want to be more successful. Ultimately, my goal is to monetize this experience and be able to allow it to benefit me and give back to me. But I'd been wanting to do YouTube for years. Finally, I got the courage to through practicing speeches and the speeches themselves are my favorite thing to do. My fellow Toastmasters can sense that they know I'm passionate about it. They're so supportive of me and I've surprised myself. You know, I always thought I'm so shy. You know, I can create behind the scenes when no one's looking. But can I actually perform in front of people? Who doesn't want to shine in front of people, in front of a crowd? Who doesn't want that experience? Here I am, I'm doing it and it feels amazing. And I'm so glad I followed that impulse to just do and feed those things that feed me. I thought there was something wrong with me. I realized it was my gift. Those moody impulses of like, are you happy or are you sad? As you become adult, you learn how to control them better. And I work with kids, so they reveal to me and they remind to me all the time, I have the exact same moody impulses they do. They're happy one moment, they're sad the next, they're very expressive with it. But we as adults, we're just so much better at hiding it. And we've been taught to, we've been rewarded to hide. Don't cry, don't show emotion. Though there is strategy behind not showing emotion. So I think that also works to your benefit. Find that one area in life where you really wanna do something, you feel frozen in place, you're stuck, you're experiencing creative block. And really ask yourself and think about what uncertainty really means. Really understand that uncertainty is everything. Everything is uncertainty. So you might as well do it. And I'll leave with this last statement. F it, just do it, okay? Just do it. Whatever you wanna do, just put it out there. Do it, create it, make it. People are waiting for it. Stop worrying about the results. Stop worrying about the, the outcome. Focus on that feeling of like, I know I'm gonna love this. I know I'm going to enjoy this. I know I'm going to appreciate this experience. I know I'm gonna appreciate what I learned coming out of this experience. So I'm gonna end it there. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope it inspires you to be a moody creative out there in the world. The world needs your art. The world needs you. The world needs you to be you and reveal to it who you are. Don't hide it. Hope you guys have a wonderful day or evening. Make sure you like, subscribe, comment down below, support the channel, and I'll see you with another one of these inspirational, um, hopefully motivating. It's not even about motivation. It's about understanding that the thing that is preventing you from pursuing the thing, there is nothing there. There's nothing there. You know, that same ability to get up and go to work, you have the same ability to do that in other areas of your life. You don't need permission. You don't even need confidence. You don't even need courage. You just need a little bit of action, a little bit of impulse, one step at a time and allow yourself to see what that outcome is whether that's just joy from being being able to do it a learning experience of having tried something different or an unexpected outcome that you didn't see thanks